So we're going to carry on then looking at these, these tools. So the polygon tool we've pretty much covered with the different sides and the angle and the radius and how you can define those. The regular polygon is very, very similar to this guy, but it's got an automatic close in it. So you don't ever have to hit the close. It's all, always going to close it for you. So the moment you hit finish is what you've chosen as the last thing. You can, I'm just going to close this aerial view down, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, why don't you get rid of all, all I, the palettes? I find it a little distracting. I'll tell um, you what, um, tuck them in. Show people how to tuck them in. Okay, that's a better call. This, these little double arrows over here uh, can open and close these palettes. And you can even move those, resize these palettes, make them bigger or smaller like this, or just tuck them away. And you can always move your mouse over to get that. Or you could right-click here, and you can get to see the different palettes that are available in the different... These are the different toolbars up here as well. So it's uh, another way of getting to the different tabs. What is the difference between uh, the irregular polygon and the regular polygon? Um, I was assuming, based on the icon, that it's when you wanted to draw something rectangular. But as I just learned, if you just make three sides on the polygon tool, uh, you can do that very easily. Right. That's for equal sides. So basically if you want to create a triangle with all equal sides, then okay. you'd use that. Whereas this one you would create a triangle with uh, with three unequal sides. So you go from here to here to here and that would finish that. And then you've created the triangle with unequal sides. Right. So again V, V and V creates the triangle with unfinished sides. And you, you, and you can see this is overlapping on the existing lines, gotcha. uh, whereas this one will create it with equal sides. And this doesn't have to be a triangle, it can be a multi-sided object. But it's always, you see there's no close option here. Gotcha. So there's a very strong similarity between that tool and that tool. It's just this one you have to actually hit close at the end of the day, and then you get the same effect as this one. Okay, okay? great. This tool here, the rectangle tool, is uh, defined by opposite corners. If you want to define it by the middle, you'd use this one with four sides, I right? See. Whereas with a rectangle, you now define it by the opposite corners. So it doesn't matter whether it's that side or that side. It's just always from V there to V there, and then you define your opposite corners. And this could be a square or a rectangle or whatever. Okay? One thing about that tool, if you are to define, if you click somewhere on your drawing and go to define the size A and B, that seems to be dependent on where your cursor is lying at that point. Yes, okay, that's a very good point. If I move the mouse into this direction, and I tab down here and I type 50 and 50, right? In the and size A and B field. Yeah. Then it moves up in the direction that I dragged. Whereas I click here and I drag down and I type in 50 and 50, it goes down in the direction that I've dragged. So the inspector bar is affected by the positive and the negative fields are not affected. It's always a positive value down there. But that changes. You know, if you select the object and then you can see the values themselves might be negative according to the X, Y, and Z, but works as a displacement away from the original object. Okay. okay. If you really dragged in the wrong direction, uh, you could always type in a negative. So now you see I can type in negative 50, and it'll go that way, even though I dragged up and to the right. Gotcha. Right.